Well, for more on China's ties with Germany, I'm joined by Michael Kimmage of the German Marshall Fund of the United States. Welcome back to the show. Nice to be here. Thanks for having me. So as we, as we now know, Premier Lee and Chancellor Merkel both denounced protectionism and said that they wanted to defend this rules-based global trading system. How much relief does that give to the global economy, especially given the backdrop of trade tensions with the U.S.? I think it does give considerable relief. It's clearly a message in, in two respects. It's a message to Washington that Washington, should uh, China and Germany be successful in this, will be isolated. Uh, but it's also a message that China and Germany are going to uphold a system. It's not just a bilateral deal, but it's a system that they're trying to uphold. Uh, and they see the U.S. as imperiling that system. So it's, it's without a doubt a global message that they were both trying to make in Berlin today. So compare the stakes that both countries have with these trade spats in Washington. Uh, I think that they're comparable. Uh, the German dependency on the American market is quite uh, considerable, and I think that that's true for China as well. There's an added dimension for Germany which China doesn't have, which is that Germany has a very deep security relationship to the United States. So President Trump will be traveling to uh, Europe this weekend for a NATO summit, and there are some worries in Germany that he'll use that as leverage for uh, economic concessions from Germany. So that's not a Chinese issue, but it's certainly a German one. And in terms of concessions, we have seen that Chancellor Angela Merkel said she would be willing to cut back on tariffs on U.S. cars imported into the European Union as part of this reciprocal agreement to try and resolve these trade spats. What are your thoughts on this? Well, I think that she probably does feel like she has to offer uh, Trump something. The U.S.-German relationship is fundamental, and Chancellor Merkel has always stood for it. There are others in Germany at the moment who are urging a more critical posture toward the U.S., and she strikes a middle position. So I think that she has to be seen as giving something to the Trump administration if she's going to demand uh, other things in return. So it seems like intelligent politics on her part. Now let's also look at the areas that China and Germany said that they want to cooperate on. They named agriculture, education, healthcare, chemical industry, telecommunication, and the automobile industry. Why do you think these sectors are so significant for both their economies? Well, uh, you know, I think that they represent the areas where, uh, where trade is most prominent. I think in the German case, the cars are a symbolic uh, issue, and it's also been one that the Trump administration has been uh, very adamant about. I think he's sort of dreamt of scenarios where there'll be no German cars uh, purchased in the United States. So I think cars have a, a, a special symbolic meaning for, uh, for Germany, but I think in other respects, these are... Uh, merely pragmatic choices. Now, we know that China is continuing to open up its markets and even reduce tariffs in certain sectors. How do you see Germany tapping into those opportunities? Well, I think this is an important thing to look at in a triangular fashion, U.S., Germany, uh, China, because after all, the arguments of the Trump administration, and the reality may prove different, but the arguments are that pressure needs to be exerted on China for the sake of greater access. So in some ways, what the Trump administration pushing, is pushing for is more trade with China uh, but on somewhat new or different terms. Uh, interestingly, two German companies were given big deals or signed big deals today in Berlin, BMW and BASF, so they are getting greater access to the Chinese market, but I think from the Chinese perspective, uh, this is the way that they would prefer to do business, not through threats of tariffs and uh, through tension, but through um, you know, sort of greater cooperation and deal making. So I think that too is a kind of signal to Washington that if you want greater access, play by the rules in the way that Germany has, uh, and you may in fact get it. Now, Europe still does have some bones of contention with China in terms of trade. Um, what would you say are the biggest points of contention when it comes to, between China and Germany, when it comes to their business and economic interests? Well, I, I think that there are concerns on the German side, and this is similar, similar in the United States, about the openness of the Chinese market uh, and uh, possibly excessive role that the state uh, plays. I think in the, in the long term, this is not an issue for this month or for next month, uh, there's the question of whether China is interested in Europe in a purely economic uh, way or if there's a geopolitical project uh, behind it, if China is in fact seeking greater influence in Europe. And that could in cer certain scenarios be welcomed by a country like Germany, but it might also be a cause uh, for alarm. So it's not just dollars and cents. Uh, or euros and cents. Uh, it's geopolitics in, in the remote background, but that could come forward in the coming months and years. And just quickly, to what degree would you say that Germany is China's gateway into Europe? I think that makes sense. I mean, Germany is decisive uh, in the European Union. It's also until <laughs> this, this month, and there are certain cracks in the, in the government in Germany, but it's a bastion of stability. You had two cabinet-level resignations in the British government today. 
uh, you have a stable government in France, but you have a lot of uncertainty in Europe. And so Germany is not just the major economy and the best trading partner, it's also uh, the politically decisive factor in Europe. So in all of those ways, it is genuinely a gateway. Always good to have you on. Thank you so much. Michael Kimmage there of the German Marshall Fund.